Okay, let's talk about how to add and subtract square roots. So what am I talking about exactly? Well, I'm talking about dealing with problems like this. We have the square root of 8, and we would like to add it to the square root of 2. So what is the answer? Now, notice I said that we would like to uh, add these up. Sometimes when you're adding or subtracting square roots, we can't really uh, simplify the expression. You'll see why here in a second. But uh, what I'm not talking about is getting our calculator out and uh, typing in the square root of 8 and getting some decimal and then typing in the square root of 2 and getting some decimal and adding them, uh, adding those two up. That's not what I'm talking about. So let's put our calculator, our calculators away, except for the one between your ears. That one comes in pretty handy. So uh, if you know what to do here, go ahead and type in your answer into the comment section because this is absolutely essential skills in any sort of algebra course. Okay, so let's get into uh, how to add and subtract square roots. So let's take a look at uh, some basic examples, and we'll get back to that example here in a second. So let's take a look at the square root of 3 plus 4 times the square root of 3. So what is the answer? I'm going to go ahead and tell you the answer. The answer is 5 times the square root of 3. Okay, so how did I get that answer? So here you have uh, the square root of 3. But outside right here, you really just have 1 square root of 3, or 1 times the square root of 3. So this is just 1 square root of 3. And then over here, I have a square root of 3, but I have 4 times the square root of 3. So this is like having 4 square roots of 3. So if I have 1 square root of 3 over here, and I have 4 square, root, uh, square roots of 3 over here, okay, let's kind of look at it this way, right? This is 4 times 1 square root of 3. That means that you have 4 square roots of 3. So here I have 4 square roots of 3. I have 1. All together, collectively, we have 5 square roots of 3. Let's take a look at this um, right here, this um, uh, problem, in another way. I want you to think of this square root of 3 and a square root of 3 like a variable. So here, let me just write it this way. We have 1 square root of 3 plus 4 square root of 3. I want you to think of uh, these here kind of like a variable. If you're familiar with how to add like terms, let's replace the square root of 3 with x. So I just have 1x plus 4x. So how many x's total do we have? We have 5x's, okay? So as long as you have the exact uh, same uh, square roots, okay? In other words, the square root of 3 and the square root of 3, we simply just add these numbers here, okay? Now, these numbers, the 1 and the 4, these can be positive and negative numbers. So whatever these are, the sum of these numbers, you're going to put that in front of the square root of 3. Okay. So let's take a look at some other problems here so we do not confuse this rule. So how about the square root of 3 plus 4 times the square root of 2? How do we add these up? Well, I have a square root of 3 here, and I have a square root of 2 here. Okay. Can I, are these exactly the same? Can I add these up? No, you cannot, because this, this is a square root of 3, and this is a square root of 2. We cannot add these up. So to kind of use my algebra example, the square root of 3, this might be like x, and then this is like, this is a different variable, like 4 times y. So these are different. Okay, so in order to add or subtract square roots, the square roots have to be exactly the same. Exactly, exactly the same. So let me erase this here so we can see this crystal clear. Okay, and uh, I know this is a little bit confusing, but I'm trying to uh, teach you this uh, pretty quickly. And uh, so let's go ahead and take a look again. I can add these square roots or subtract them because these, this is a square root of 3, and this square root is exactly the same as this square root. They're both square roots of 3. So I can do something with that, and I just simply add or subtract these numbers outside of the square root. Okay, again, 5 square root of 3. But in this example here, okay, I have a square root of 3 and a square root of 2. They are not exactly the same, so I can't do anything. You know, matter of fact, all I can do is just leave it as it is. Okay, so this right here is in, uh, is uh, basically one kind of um, value. Okay, one expression just like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, problem. So we have the cube root of three and the square root of three right here, four square root of three. So can I do anything with this problem? No, you cannot, because this is the cube root of three. This is the square root of three. And the square root, there's actually a little tiny invisible 2 up there. So um, when you're adding or subtracting, 
okay? These have to be perfectly 100% the same. We can't have the cube root and the square root, uh, but if we had the cube root of three plus uh, four times a cube root of three or four cube root of three, we can do this because these are exactly the same, okay? So this would be, again, there's a one outside here. This would be five cube root of three, okay? So we are talking about square roots, but I wanted to really you know, highlight uh, two situations where you know students can easily get a little confused about this. So if you understand this, we can add or subtract square roots, but the square root, uh, the square root parts have to be 100% identical. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this next problem here. All right, so here we have the square root of eight plus the square root of two. So some of you out there might be like, "Whoa, we can't do anything here because these are not the same." So I'm going to skip this and turn in my quiz or test early and move on to, I don't know, playing some nice video game on my cell phone. No, no, don't uh, be in such a rush because we can't really see the whole story here the way this is written. I have the square root of eight plus the square root of two. What you need to do is you need to fully simplify all your square roots in order really to kind of see the reality of what's going on. Okay, so I can't really uh, assess whether I can add or subtract these two square roots here because this is not fully simplified. Okay, so we're going to try to fully simplify it. And what I mean by this is we want to break this up in its factors. Now, this is a separate video. I've been doing some other videos on square roots. So you need to know how to simplify square roots. So we can write the square root of eight as the square root of four times two. Four times two is eight. And I could pull apart this one big square root into two separate square roots. So this is uh, the same thing as the square root of four times the square root of two, that is the same thing as the square root of eight, okay? But the advantage of doing this is the square root of four, the principal square root, which is just the positive version of it, is two. So now the square root of eight really, in a more simplified manner, can be written as two times the square root of two. Now I can look at this problem, okay? Instead of looking at it this way, I can look at it this way, okay? So this is two square root of two, uh, plus the square root of two, and I can do this problem now because I have the exact same square root, okay? So this is two square root of two, and there's a one right here, one square root of two. So how many square roots of two do we have? Well, that would be two plus one, or three square roots of two. All right, so hopefully you're getting a feel for this. Again, you're gonna need to know um, how to simplify square roots to uh, be able to add and subtract uh, square root expressions. But let's take a look at a subtraction problem here real quick uh, because this is adding and subtracting square roots. So let's take a look at six square root of 10 minus eight square root of 10. So how can we deal with this? Well, first thing, um, first things first, we're looking at the square root of 10 and I'm saying, okay, are these the exact same square roots? They are square root of 10 and square root of 10. So now you could just think of this uh, problem as six square root of 10 minus eight squared to 10, I could just write this as plus negative eight. This is a negative eight there, okay? So I'm gonna add these numbers, six and negative eight, okay? And I'm gonna put that uh, result in front of the square root of 10. So six plus negative eight, hopefully you're up to speed on your positive negative numbers is negative two. So the answer is negative two square root of 10. Now there's a lot of different uh, problems here and uh, additional practice and we can make this much more complicated, but if you understand the basics here and you got all this right, well then let me go ahead and go ahead and give you a nice smiley face for uh, just being a superstar in mathematics. Let's get you an A plus and 100% nice job. Now generally I kind of put in some nice hairstyles, but we'll kind of skip that for more challenging uh, problems. So nice work, okay? So again, when it comes to square roots, there's quite a bit to know, okay? You have to, of course, know how to add, subtract, multiply, divide, and simplify, okay? So uh, the key here is not just to watch me do one prom, you know, a quick video, and be like, okay, I got this, so I'm therefore I'm an expert at it. No, you have to uh, follow through and practice this stuff on your own. Remember, math is a skill. Uh, I have that skill, but in order for you to acquire the skill, you have to do your own individual practice. So I have additional videos on my YouTube channel, but if you really want to, if you really, really want to learn this stuff, uh, I'm going to encourage you to check out one of my algebra courses. But if this little video helped you out, go ahead and consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And maybe even subscribe to my YouTube channel. Again, I have uh, a lot of videos on my channel. So I have a lot more um, 
you know, on square roots. You just kind of have to go through my various playlists, my algebra playlist, etc. But my best math help will always be within my, within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.